Uh, and so with that, uh, I would like to uh, welcome uh, our, our next uh, speaker. Um, and this is going to be a fascinating conversation. Um, <laughs> very cool stuff. Um, so uh, welcome to the stage, uh, Elena Adams, Program Manager and DART Mission Systems Engineer from the Johns Hopkins University Applied Physics Laboratory. Elena, welcome. Thank you. So I typically pace, um, which will be great. Um, so how do I uh, advance a, slides? You can grab a handheld uh, to pace if you want. And then, and then the slide is supposed to be off. Yep, slides, uh, the down button. All right. Up on the screen and then right All right, can you guys? Yeah, you can hear me. <laughs> All right. So um, I'm Elaine Adams, I'm the Dark Mission Systems Engineer. And today we're gonna talk about Earth striking back and getting the revenge um, for the dinosaurs. So of course we don't do this alone. This is a large consortium of people all over the country and moreover all over the world. Um, I just wanna give a shout out to our Italian colleagues who are providing a little cute set that is fighting along with Dart. So we're also part of a larger co cooperation agreement with ESA, where we are just the first mission for planetary defense. Uh, there's a second mission that's going to the same target in uh, 2026, and it's going to arrive there, and it's going to observe after dark is done, and I'll tell you what we're going to do. But um, they're getting there in 2026. Hera, very good mission. Brian makes things about it. But we are part of the planetary defense at NASA. So PDCO was established in 2016, but they have been doing this for a much longer period of time. People have been observing collisions on the surface of Earth for quite a while. Um, you know, we get meteorites on the surface. Uh, the planetary defense office not only does it detect asteroids and looks for them and tracks them. It also tries to characterize them to try to figure out what are they actually made out of. So if it is an actual hazard when it's coming into the atmosphere of the earth, then we know what's going to happen. Is it going to air burst? Is this actually going to get all the way down to the surface and cause damage? So DART is the first mission to try to mitigate uh, this possibility. So, of course, we're a part of the larger strategy. Uh, this is uh, from the report of the National New Earth Project Preparedness Strategy and Action Plan. And yes, I cannot say that any faster. Um, so that was in 2018. We are part of rule number three, uh, near deflection, destruction, and mitigation. But as you can see, there are many different goals to this plan, including new detection tracking, modeling, and increasing international cooperation because planetary defense is a global sport. And then, of course, strengthening exercise because sometimes you just have to let the asteroid hit and then deal with the consequences for smaller asteroids. So there are multiple ways of mitigating uh, incoming object. Uh, there are things well, people have talked about, of course, uh, Bruce Willis. Um, other than that, uh, there are other things like gravity tractor, where you fly by the asteroid and gravity of your own spacecraft will actually push it, uh, change its trajectory. There are other things too, like laser ablation and uh, you can cover the asteroid in aluminum foil. Um, but also there are more real ones such as a nuclear. Uh, in, a, in that case, you would actually detonate a nuclear weapon near the asteroid and the shock wave that you would create would push uh, the asteroid to change the trajectory. We are none of those things. We are the one that actually works and the one that we can implement right now, which is go hit an asteroid and see what happens because we're an experiment. So our goal is to go to the Didymo system. Uh, it's a binary system consistent of two asteroids and hit the moon of the larger asteroids. By hitting it, we will change its orbit around the larger asteroids. We will change the duration, the period of that orbit. So if everything goes well, we will change the orbit by about 10 minutes. And uh, then the ground telescopes will observe this period change, and we will learn a lot more for our models for the future. 
So DART S scale, this is a little bit about, this is the size of our asteroid, you know, 780 meters for the bigger asteroid. And the smaller one <clears throat> is only 163 meters in size. So, you know, something between the Statue of Liberty and the Great Pyramids of Giza. Very hard to detect in space because these objects are very small and very dark. So what will DART do? This is our level one science objectives. Well, uh, is to impact Dimorphos. Uh, Dimorphos is getting close to Earth uh, right around October, uh, September of 2022. Um, our impact date is September 26. And then uh, we will change the binary orbital period, our uh, requirement is 73 seconds. I said the latest models predict about 10 minutes. And then uh, we will measure the period change and measure also the momentum enhancement factor. I haven't talked about that. But that's basically, imagine after we slam into an asteroid, we'll create a plume, an ejecta. And that plume will actually cause a change in the momentum of the asteroid, additional change in momentum. So that's what we're measuring as well. So this is really kind of the ideal time for us to go to Denimos. Why is that? So this shows a little movie of you know, us launching. You'll see DART. It launched, it's going right by Earth the whole time. You know, we're not going very far, but we are getting to the asteroid just at its closest time to Earth because we want to do these measurements. We want to use the radar. Uh, we want to use the other ground telescopes to look for the asteroid. So it's really kind of, Deimos is really an ideal target for us because imagine if you're just going to an asteroid that is in the orbit around the sun, the change that you would have to make to that asteroid, to its trajectory, will be so big that, it, and also not very safe, right? What if you change it in the wrong direction? Here, this is a very safe experiment because you're basically, all you're doing is you're just changing the orbit a little bit, and it's not going to change how the main asteroid actually orbits around the sun. So, because we get this question a lot, how safe is this experiment? Pretty safe. So, and also, it's not like we're hitting it out of the ballpark. This is a small nudge, just 1% change, but just enough that if this was a real threat, it would miss the Earth. So, how do we measure it afterwards? You know, there's the um, on the ground, and the way we know actually that Didymos has a small moon is that we look at it from the ground telescopes and we see the light dimming every time its moon crosses the front of the asteroid, kind of how you observe exoplanets, right? Except with the asteroids. And that's how we know Dimorphos is there. So we'll do the same thing afterwards and measure the change. And we have a lot of uh, friends all over the country and all over the world who are getting ready to start this campaign and measure uh, the Morpheus period. So not only are we first uh, planetary defense demonstration mission, we actually do a lot of new demonstrations for NASA in different technologies. So the number one thing and the part that I will talk about a lot is the autonomous smart navigation. That is how we're planning to hit the asteroid. I'll talk about that a lot. Uh, we have a Draco imager, which is the telescope that's going to be tracking the, the moons. Uh, we have a Nessie ion engine that we're demonstrating for NASA as well. A CubeSat that we're carrying with us that's going to fly by after we hit. And is going to, it's, we used to call it selfie sat, but um, you know, uh, NASA didn't like that. So it's called Leecher Cube CubeSat. And it's going to take a picture of the ejecta plume and hopefully the site where we impacted afterwards. We also demonstrate new types of solar arrays for NASA, which is the rollout solar arrays. You've probably seen those on the ISS rolling out. Well, we are the first autonomous flight of them. It was really fun developing those during the pandemic, I'll just say that. And uh, we also have little transformational solar array cell concentrators, which is basically concentrate the satellites, enabling for future missions to the outer solar system. Lots of stuff. Here's our spacecraft. It's about um, 770 kilos when we finally hit. It has giant solar arrays that are powering the next ion engine, which we're using only for demonstration. But um, it is pretty cool. 
So the eyes of this whole thing, of course, is the Draco instrument. It's based on the Lori uh, instrument that took all those amazing images of Pluto. And this is uh, one of our first images when we just got on uh, in flight. We took images of the uh, starfish cluster, and it was a really good day for all of us because we knew the door was open and everything was working and really good. But so the challenges for this mission has really been that we know very little about the object that we're going to hit. What you see here, and whoa, you can't see it even that well. There's a little dot that's moving across the stream. And that is what we know about Didymos right now. In 2003, um, there was a closest approach where we actually observed the radar shape um, of the asteroid, but we don't really know what Dimorphos looks like. All of the asteroids come in all shapes and sizes, right? I mean, as an engineer, I was hoping sphere one, perfect. You hit the middle and you're good. Uh, however, that's probably not the case. Um, you know, it could be like Eros, uh, the one that Mir went to. Uh, it could be something like the KW4B. It, there are many different aspects. And so our system has to autonomously glide into this asteroid without ever knowing the shape. Because we really won't know in time when to hit them what the shape looks like. And uh, so, I'll just uh, go back a little bit. About 30 days out, we start seeing Didymos for the first time. You know, it's a speck in our field of view. Then as we get closer in, at about four hours before we impact, the space car becomes completely autonomous. So we are on the ground in the mop, watching the paint dry, I hope, and um, basically watching one speck in the field of view of our camera getting larger and larger. Because the whole time we're streaming data back to Earth, we're streaming video back to Earth. So we'll actually watch the impact near real time. So 60 minutes out will be the earliest probably when we see Dimorphos for the first time. And at that point, it's 1.4 pixels. Some models say it's actually as late as 40 minutes when we'll see it for the first time before impact. And it'll get bigger and bigger in our field of view as we get closer in. But you can see that at four minutes, it's only 20 pixels across in our field of view. So we stop maneuvering at two minutes. So this whole time, the spacecraft is, you know, he has identified that this is Dimorphos, this is our target, and is lighting itself in. It's performing autonomous maneuvers, trying to center itself to hit the center of the object. So at two minutes out, we stop maneuvering, and then at 20 seconds, we finally meet our uh, requirements of being able to set images back with the right pixel resolution because we actually want to know what did we impact because the angle of the impact is important as well. So just to give you guys a feeling, I love this quote. If you look at the map, it's as if we were in D500 when we stop maneuvering and then coast all the way into the Camden Yards. That is the goal of SmartNav and that is how we are going to impact this asteroid. So Last couple of years have been really hard and dark. Uh, as you know, uh, uh, last couple of years, we've had a lot of COVID issues. Um, in March 2020 was when we started integration of the spacecraft. We had our review, integration readiness review, and then we basically the whole world uh, stopped. However, we didn't. We built the spacecraft, uh, brought, it, brought it back from Airjet in 2020. This is with the propulsion integrated. And then I'll just, I just love pictures of hardware because last couple of years have been hard, but this is how we built up the spacecraft, installed our next Xeon thruster, tested it, got a thermal vac. This is our solar arrays rolled out for the first time. And, um, and then installed our Draco instrument, I tested it. I installed our Lichiki. This is our Italian colleagues looking very happy when we installed the CubeSat. And uh, then we went to Vandenberg Space Force Base, uh, where we launched on top of the SpaceX um, Falcon 9 rocket. Seven, six, five. You always have to show the launch video, right? And we, we saw it early. Everybody gets excited about the launch video. And um, I have to say, this was a really great time for us. And the best part was that on the uh, Falcon 9, you actually get to see your spacecraft separate from the launch vehicle. So what you're seeing is the camera here actually 
uh, you'll see the spacecraft on the left, and then you will see light off into the space towards the Morpheus. It, it, it is absolutely amazing. So uh, we launched. Uh, it was a really good launch. We launched actually on the first attempt uh, because Mandy doesn't slip. So you too can become a planetary defender if you go to our website. Uh, we, uh, if you ask, if you pass a quiz, I think there are five questions. You can become a planetary defender and get your badge, so that way you're ready for when we actually get to Demorphus on uh, September 26th this year. So this is a little bit of a, you know, the movie of how we're getting there. Uh, we deployed our solar race, uh, which was kind of a harrowing experience for us, as you can imagine, without uh, the correct deployment of the race would be sunk. Opened up our Draken door, and then we're on the way to Demorphus. It's a little dark, but then again, it's dark in space. Um, we fired our ion engine for a couple of hours, showed the, demonstrated it. We also uh, are releasing the leisure cube CubeSat actually 10 days before we hit. And that's another animation because usually you release the CubeSat right as you launch. In this case, we're actually uh, getting pretty close. Yep. And then, you know, coming to the theater night near you, on uh, September 26th. Here you go, guys. Thank you, Elena. Uh, any audience questions? We have time for maybe one or two quick questions. Anyone? Uh, we've got one over here, or two over here. Um, so why don't we start with the one in the back up there? Huh? Uh, I'm curious how much of what we learn with DART will be able to transfer to impacting an asteroid from different directions based on how you want to take care of your orbit. And that's a really good question. Thank you. Uh, actually, quite a bit, right? Because uh, the the as well, this particular approach works well if the asteroid is lit. Right. Uh, if, but however, you can do this also with infrared cameras as well. So, oh, there you go. Do you um, expect to be able to measure any change in the rotation rate, or do we? And then, do we know what this rotation rate? Um, so, no, we don't know what the rotation rate is. And uh, the answer is that yes, there are models that show from the libration of the asteroid. Uh, you know, you, the light curve is not just, you know, a dip and that's it. You can actually uh, take out uh, bigger signatures there. So there are thoughts that you would be able to measure how much we put into the rotation versus the actual uh, change in momentum, but most of it is going to be a translation. And one more quick one. Given that it's autonomous when it gets there, is there any chance you could hit the wrong the big guy instead of the little guy? Uh, you know, that's a good question. I ask that all the time. Uh, we've done a lot of simulations. Uh, the goal is no, um, because uh, really there's a large separation in the size of the asteroid. And we usually do, you know, this is engineers, we do three sigma on everything. So we change our brightness of the asteroid. We change the size of the asteroids within the three sigma of where we, what we think it is. The location of the asteroid, we the lighting of the asteroid, the albedo, you know. So we move uh, all of these things around, and yet we still show that we hit most of the time. But this is an experiment, so I hope it goes well. Excellent. Well, uh, another round of applause for Elena. Thank you very much.